And uh, we're going to go to the book of Joshua. I need to meet with my trustees directly after service, so if you see me slip out the back and some of our trustees slip out the back, please uh, forgive us, but we need to have a meeting uh, today just for a few minutes. It's good to have Brother Donnie here uh, today. Let's give yeah. one of our thanks. Wow, all these things you have to say as a pastor, but aren't we thankful that he survived that crash? Yes. And uh, even though uh, even though he had to have surgery on his leg, uh, he was wearing a helmet, and everybody that rides a motorcycle or an ATV needs to listen to this. Uh, he was riding with a helmet, and that saved his life. And so we're thankful. Matter of fact, I was on the way to... Uh, to our retreat, Sister Tyner and my retreat, we got to Spicer and uh, my phone Bluetooth to my motorcycle and my key fob was in my motorcycle so my phone was trying to Bluetooth and they were trying to call me and it was just a mess. So I ended up having to pull off the road with this rig and get out and walk way up the road so I could talk and uh, found out what had happened. We turned around and come to the truck stop and Sister Tyner was on her motorcycle so I had her stay there with the trailer, and I rode on Sister Tyner's little sportster. And she's got it set up for little short legs and little short arms. So I rode to Muncie like this to pray for Brother Donnie. And I was in such a hurry with her. She said, aren't you going to grab your home? And I said, no, I just need to get so I can get back. So I got there to see Brother Donnie, and he was in tremendous pain, but he still had enough about him to scold me real good about not wearing home. And I thank him. I know he loves me, so he's just trying to help me. Um, we, we know that the children of Israel had been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. <clears throat> and they, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And I don't know how much reading I'll, I'll get done. This is quite a lengthy lesson if I read everything I had. So I'll paraphrase a lot today. But they wandered in the wilderness because of what? Why, why did they wander in the wilderness? Somebody to speak it out. Disobedience. That was part of it, right? What else? They didn't trust God. That was part of it. What else? Complaining. Okay. So all these things, they were complainers. They, God said, because you're acting out like this, you're not going to enter into the promised land. So for 40 years they wondered, and they wondered and they wondered and they wondered until uh, everyone over the age of 20 died out. Okay, and then Moses died, and Joshua was spoken to. He said, you're gonna, it's time now, I want you to take courage and leave these people. We, we know that story, right? So, so what happened was that they, they entered into the promised land uh, and here's where we start talking about conquest that we've talked about so often here. They, they had to go in and fight for the land to possess it. It wasn't given to them like you would suppose. And I think sometimes that hurts our feelings because we have to fight for something. You know, because we're, we're used to getting things our way and we want it, you know, when it's milk and honey, that sounds real good. I want my promise. Woo! Glory to God, I'm reaching out there. I'm going to get my promise. And then when it comes along, you have to fight for it. You say, right. what's that about God? But it's called conquest. Right. So not only does God give you the land, He gives you the ability to go out and fight yes. to receive it so that you can take possession of it and you can feel ownership of it. Right. Because you don't, listen, God doesn't raise spoiled children. That's right. Look at me. If you see spoiled children, it, it's not going to be that way for very long. After a while, they're going to have a big wake up and find out it's not a cakewalk. That's right. right? Right? You told your kids that, right? Right. But one of these days, you're going to find out life's not that easy. Yeah. You get out on your own. Because what, when you're a baby, the Lord puts you in the, in the crib, you know, puts you in the nursery. He dispatches angels to watch over you, takes care of you, and then you go you get into those teenage years where you start having to find out what the real world's like. Get your first job. You know what, what I'm talking about. You have to 
pay for it, the car that you just got, insurance, and all those kinds of things. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So here they go, and the first place they come to was what? Somebody tell me. What was the first place they come to? Jericho. Huh? Jericho. Jericho, yes. Jericho. Tell me about Jericho. Big walls, little place, big walls. This property is the size of Jericho. This church property, seven acres. Seven acres, Jericho. Big walls, small place. Whenever I teach on Jericho, I remind us the fact that Jericho, although it be a small place, had big walls, but it had to be conquested because it represented something. Right. And here's what I want you to grasp as we're moving on through this point. That there are little things in your life that God sees differently than you do. You may see them as small things. God says they may be small to you, but they're big to me. Right. And they represent something. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. So little things sometimes that we don't think are very significant that have the big walls that we really we don't want to have to deal with because it's inconvenient. Right. And what do we want to do? We want to move on. Right. We don't want to deal with that. Right. right? But what happens when we don't deal with our enemies and don't deal with our problems and don't deal with the things that stand in our way? Eventually, they'll catch up to us. So God shows us in His Word that He didn't let them bypass Jericho. They had to conquest it before they could move on. Now, Joshua meets the captain of the Lord's host. Can anybody tell me who that might have been? It was the pre-incarnate Christ. We've been talking about it. We talked about that with Samson. Here's another place in the Scripture where we see a pre-incarnate Christ. Jesus come along. And He's standing there and Joshua says, Well, whose side are you on? He said, I'm not on your side and I'm not on the other side either. I'm on God's side. Sometimes we think God's always on our side. That's not the question. The question is, whose side are you on? Because sometimes, as, as wonderful as you are, you're not always right. And you got some causes that you think are just causes. But sometimes they're not on God's to-do list. I'm going to let that sink in. They're not on God's to-do list. But God does have an agenda. And you're better off when you can figure out what God's agenda is. And you can follow after what God wants to happen. So... God gives this strange plan, right? I say strange because His ways are higher than our ways. And if it's up to us, we'd be devising ladders and we'd be, you know, getting catapults together. I'm talking about then. Now we would get our tanks and armor and everything else and we would just fly in some jets, F-15, 16s, whatever they are now, Phantom, whatever. And we'd be flying them in and we'd be shooting some some bombs, you know, off the battleships, what are those called, cruise missiles, you know, and we, we'd fight it in our own manner. It's just a different type of, of armament and weapons than they had back then, but it's the same thing. Men trying to devise their own things to get done what they feel like they need to get done. We all see the need, but we, we need to understand the premise that we need to follow as a child of God is to always make sure we're following after God's plan. Because God's got a way to fight against the enemies of your life. Right. God's got a way to help you pass your addictions. And it may not always make sense. Right. God's got a, a way to help you pass your other problems in life. And it may not always be uh, something that makes sense. Health issues, spiritual issues, whatever it might be. Sometimes God is saying, this is what I want you to do. So, what did God ask him to do? I want you to march around this city. 
Now remember, if it had been Indianapolis, 465, right? On the seventh day, they'd have had to go on around that puppy seven times. Is that going to happen? No, not walking. This is a smaller place. Each day, one time. Seventh day, seven times. Blow the trumpets. Shout. Everybody say shout. shout. Can you give me a shout? Shout. shout. Guys that hit about halfway have the walls. Now let's try one more time. Give me a shout. Yeah. There you go. And so, so here's an army <laughs> shouting out. You know, listen, doesn't make sense, but the walls come down because they were obedient to God. Yes, that's it. Okay. You say, where are you going with this? Well, I'm not to my point yet. Here's, here's the thing. God says, I'm going to give you the city, and He did. But He said, I, I want you to go in, and there are certain things I want to go to the temple. I want you to understand this. There are certain things that are God's that belong to God, that don't belong to you. Ooh, it's quiet, because He's talking about money, isn't it? We, are get, we get deathly afraid when a pastor talks about money. He's going to give us a secret that we don't know and it's going to come out of our pocket. <laughs> you already know the answer to that. God wants what's His. That's what Jesus said. Render unto Caesar's the things that are Caesar's. Render unto God the things that are God's. That's all you have to remember. What does God desire? What does God always ask to we can talk about a time, we can talk about a tenth, we can talk about the New Testament version of that where they give their houses. Would God ask you to give your house? Look at me. He might. He asked me to give up a bass boat one time. Did you do it, Pastor? Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole different way of dealing with things in the New Testament, isn't it? But here is... Uh, Here's the thing. There was a fella in the group. You know, they were to kill everything. They were to get rid of every other thing except for certain articles, gold and silver, certain vessels. Everything else was to be destroyed. But there was a certain guy in the group. Anybody tell me his name? Aiken. And Aiken came along and he said, that looks pretty good to me. This garment, what right. gold, silver, a little bit of nothing really, but it was it was some money. It was some stuff. And what he did is he took that and he buried it in his tent. Right. <clears throat> is it okay if I just continue to paraphrase you with me? Yeah. You can read it as we go. Well, here's the thing. They had a place that they were going to go conquest next. It was called Ai. Ai. Ai was another small place. And Joshua, not knowing of Achan's sin, said, I'll tell you what we need to do. We're just going to send two or three thousand men to fight this battle. This is a small place and we don't need everybody. What, what's missing in the equation is he did not meet with the captain of the host again. Right. He did not pray about what was supposed to happen. He had just made a supposition about how they were going to fight this battle. I'm going to take two or three thousand men and we're going to go up here and this is going to be a cakewalk. And guess what? It wasn't. Thirty some people died because of that. Because of that mistake. What do you think would have happened if Joshua would have said to God, God, what do you want us to do? Let me inquire of you, God. How do you want us to handle this? You think God might have spoken to him and said, wait a minute, there's something undone. Before you go do this, there's something you need to attend to. Right. There's sin again. Right. That's right. We don't like when people talk about sin. That's close to the quick sometimes when we start dealing with personal sins. Anyway, 
They go to fight this battle. Thirty some people die. Joshua and the other men rip their clothes, fall on their face, and begin to cry out to God, Why did you take us here? Why did you lead us here? If this is what's going to happen, and you're going to let us get beat up on and defeated all the time, why didn't you just leave us alone? And Joshua starts taking on the nature of the people that died in the wilderness. It's hard to beat up on that slave mentality once you get it. You start thinking like that, you know, you start believing like that, you start pointing your finger at God, it's your fault, not my fault. Because victim mentality always looks, you know, there's a reason why I am the way that I am. It can't be me. Not my problem. Somebody else's issue. Not my issue. But it was their problem. There was something to do with it. And what did God say? God said, get up and shut up. Some of you need to hear that. God's tired. You're blaming God, saying all this stuff, and you're saying it out of emotion because you feel victimized and you're not looking realistically at what's truly going on. Right, right. God does get our attention. Yes, he does. God does chasten us. God does deal with us. He shows us when we're moving ahead of Him and we should be listening to Him. Because some of your plans haven't worked out. Look at me. I'm talking to somebody here. Some of your plans haven't worked out. God, why? What are you doing to me? Don't you love me? I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I've been doing that. It's not been about what you've been doing. That's right. It's what you haven't been doing. That's right. Where's your prayer life? Where's your fasting life? Oh. What about some of that stuff that you need to get rid of? That's it. Right. right. That's right. You don't want to think about it. Don't want to talk about it. It's that little hidden stuff that's it. that you're refusing to deal with that's, right. that's really amounting to something with God. Yes. Amen. And God said, I'm not going to let you get by with it because if I let you get by with it, that wouldn't be good for you. Right. Amen. Right. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> God gives discernment and God allows judgment to fall and He does so in a very responsible manner. But we have to, we have to see what God is doing in all this. There was a thing called the Urim, Urim and the Thummim, right? That's what they used to discern. And the priests carried it. White rock, black rock, rock. Everybody say white rock. Black rock. Black rock. Urim and Thummim. Mm -hmm. All right? Reach, reach into his pasture, whatever rock come out, was, that was the judgment. Right? So, so Joshua said, we got to find out who this is. We're going to bring him by, by tribes. Right. And the tribe of Judah was chosen. By families, his family was chosen. By man by man, Achan was chosen. God said, you're going to burn these people with fire. You're going to burn everything they got. Everybody said judgment. Yeah. God is a consuming fire. This yes, is what I got. To, somebody needs to hear this. You, you're right. playing God as a dummy. You're acting like God. God's just going to let everything pass that you do. And you've got to understand, this is a God that is a consuming right. fire. Amen. He's a God that says, I know all things. Yes. Right. There's nothing hidden from God. Yeah. Right. And so when Achan went and he buried this stuff in his tent, he disrespected God. Yes. There's a thing called reverence or fear. Right. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. It's just talking about reverence of God. When you start acting out and you may believe that God can't see these things and you can still get by with whatever you do, you're disrespecting God. Right. Right. Because God's bigger than that. He's yeah. omnipresent. He's omniscient. Yes. He's omnipotent. Oh, 
And when we act like God doesn't see these things, we, we absolutely discredit God. Right. Yeah. That's good. Now, here's what I really wanted to get at. I've come all this way to get to here. His sin, Achan's sin, did it only affect Achan? No. Who else did it affect? Family. Somebody said family. Who else did it affect? Let's try. How about all of Israel? Did it? Yes. Yeah, because they went to AI and what happened? And how many people died? And who can they blame for that? Well, my sin not amount to that much. My sin's not affecting anybody. God doesn't really care about my sin. You don't understand. It's so insignificant. How could God care about that? I want you to wake up. Wake up. Snap your hands. I got people about half asleep. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. All right. Hang on. Get somewhere. Your sin is not just your sin. It affects other people. It affects the body of Christ. It can affect your church. These bozo pastors that allow sin upon the platform. Say, why do you act the way you do sometimes, Pastor? Why do you set people down? I know you set a few people down. Why do you do that? That's not love. That's not compassion. I do that because we do not want to see the body of Christ go punished when we don't need to be punished. We need the anointing of God. What we do is important. God sent us out here to make a difference. We're to conquest. We don't need to suffer more and more and more defeats. Somebody's got to be responsible to stand up and say, no, that cannot be allowed. Instead of pointing your finger and saying, oh, that man that will stand up for what's right. right. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We're living in a day and in a time when a lot of things are just overlooked in the congregation. Sin's not talked about, not dealt with. Right. right. Amen. Amen. What is the Tell me the trends of the day. Why did we celebrate with Austin and Candy? Why did we celebrate with them? What's the trend of the day? Living together. Right. We don't want to talk about that because it's so prevalent that if we talk about it, then we'll have people leave the church. We can't have people leave the church. Right. You're not showing love when people leave the church. Now hang on here. If I love you, I'm going to tell you things at times you don't want to hear. Because I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. Right. That's right. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to see anybody burned up. That's right. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to go through that judgment. I don't want right. you to go through that judgment. I don't want anybody in the church to go through that judgment. Right. And if I'm not careful and if, I, if I'm not obedient to the Lord, we'll all suffer right. because we're allowing things to go unchecked and let That's people it. believe that they can live any kind of life they want to. Amen. Go ahead and smoke your dope. Go ahead and take your pills. Go ahead and drink your alcohol. Go ahead and run one another's lives. Just do right. whatever you want to do. Go ahead. Hey, pastor, you don't know anything about grace. What do you talk about these things, Pastor? I, don't you know that we're in grace and churches are chilling out and everything is different than it used to be? I agree things are different than what they used to be, but it's a God's shame that it is. 
It's a travesty against what's yeah. right and holy. Amen. When people don't stand up and say what's true and right. right. We can't cover things over right. and make believe it's okay before God. Right. God said sin is sin. Yes. Yes. When something's sin, then it must be dealt with. Amen. So when we're coming here, and thank you for being good, and these two got married too. We celebrate with you. So people are, Greg and Megan, all these folks are saying, we're going to do all well, try. Right. And it's not just about marrying. It's about right. keeping sin out yes. of our life. Yes. So, 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 so when I touch, let me cover this so, so that I'll, I'll say this in the spirit of love. When I hit you, and I will. Right. That's right. <laughs> you come here long enough, I'm going to step on your toe. Amen. Oh, get, get in your stuff and right. you're gonna get upset with me. Just right. smile and say, that's just my pastor. <laughs> he's going to tell me things I don't want to hear. Yeah. And he's going to get on my sin. Yeah. He's going to talk about being obese. Yeah. Right. That's, a, that's a hidden sin of the church for years. Right. Amen. Praise God. He's like it's gluttony. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Ruth. It's gluttony. It's been the sin of the church for years. And we preached on tobacco. And we preached on alcohol. And we preached on everything else. And we're overweight. And we're killing ourselves, destroying our temple. Just the same. Right. Just the same if we were smoking. Right. And, and, and so we got that. We got all kinds of other little issues. But remember, it's the... It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. So I got my own battle. I don't fight yours, you know, for you, and I don't try to pick on you because I, I get any pleasure out of that. I pick on myself just as much, don't I? Right. Yeah. I talk about my struggle. And you watch me go through my struggle. You see my waistline get big and then thin and then big and then thin. <laughs> Because I do need to know yeah. that, that people are people and we all struggle. We're, our right. flesh is strong yes. sometimes, so strong we have to work at it and right. fight it. That's right. We're all on the same boat, beloved, so don't feel like yeah. you're being picked on. Yeah. One of these days I'll get your particular sin and we'll really talk about it. And how about that? Okay. So you won't feel left out. Funny how we can pick on somebody else's sin. Right? Yeah, that's right. I'll tell you that little story of the young man that I come up in ministry with. I've told it before, but maybe some of you haven't heard it. Uh, we all come up in ministry together. The idea of mom back at the time, you remember how it was, the ministry all sat on the platform, and the closer to the pastor you got, it meant the order that you got a little step closer to the hierarchy. So every chair meant something. You fought for your chair. You, you, you fought for your chair. And, and so so uh, uh, this young brother and I come up in ministry together, you know, and I, I, I watched him eventually get destroyed because of his flesh. His flesh was too strong. Didn't realize it. But, but we would be at, almost every Sunday, we would get together, we would go to their house, we'd spend time with them. One day he was telling me how he went to the basketball to play ball. You have to remember, I'm old. That, that was when I was 20-something. And uh, so he just told me about going to the basketball court. You know? he, said, he said, I got blessed the other day. <coughs> How'd you get blessed? He said, well, I went to the basketball course and somebody left this really nice basketball. I got blessed. I thought, no, dude, you stole somebody's basketball. <laughs> Some kid's going to come back here looking for their ball and it's going to be gone because you took it and claimed that as a blessing of the Lord. I mean, God can get a hold of your heart so much. Now, I want you to listen to this. You go to the pop machine and somebody forgot their change. God can deal with you so much that you leave the change in the pop machine. I've done it. God will deal with you so much the, the lady at Walmart give you too much change back, right. you'll stop and say, wait a minute. That's right. I'm going to take that back. And I 
that's ten dollars I needed. That's okay, isn't it, Pastor? No stealing. That don't belong to you. But stealing. And so, so all these little things that we can pick out in other people, right. we need to look at ourselves and we need to see what's going on because our sin affects somebody. Yes. We're, we're stopping our family from moving forward. We're stopping ourselves from moving forward. We're continuing to struggle in our life and we don't realize it's these little things that's causing this problem. Right. And when, when you get enough little things together, you start to think differently about yourself. Right. That's right. We'll let that one sink in. I'll try to close in about 10 minutes. Listen, you start thinking differently about yourself. Yes. After a while, you even give up. Because you look at yourself so differently. Right. How did Aiken think about himself? What do you think of when that stuff is in the, in the center of your tent under the dirt? What are you thinking about yourself? What about church service that week? How do you think Aiken acted when he went to church service? <laughs> Praise God! Hallelujah! I think he was acting like that. No. Man, I can't believe we had such a good service today. It was so free. I really felt the Lord. I... What do you expect? That's it. You don't have any motivation, any option to do anything. You know why? Because you don't even believe in yourself. You know you're doing wrong. Right. That's it. You know stuff's not right. Oh. <laughs> Looking at your pornography. Then it goes unchecked. Right. I, listen, watch me, guys. Watch me, guys. I pray every one of you that your wives find you out, and let you alone until right. you get it right in your life. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. The mom finds you out. Right. When I was a kid, here's a true confession. True confession. I had a magazine I shouldn't have. When I was a teenager. Could you believe such as that? As a teenage boy? Yeah. Preacher's kid. Worst ones of the bunch. And I found a way to pull back the carpet a little bit about around the register and stuff it back in there. Now my mom had discernment. She's sitting right over there. More than probably anybody that I ever met. When Trish and I were getting ready to run away, I took some of my underwear out of my drawer and I hid it away so that we could. Some of you didn't even know we ran away. We ran away. Oh, you got a, you got a doozy as a pastor trying to shoot the neighbor Santa Claus off and all that kind of stuff. That's real stuff. That's real, that don't that's not make believe stuff. And my mama calls me. I'm over at her mom and dad's house and she says you. Somebody come in here and took your underwear. It's gone. I said, there must have been a thief, Mom. She said, you mean that's all they come to get was your underwear? But that little magazine, my mom would come in there and wretched her hand back underneath the carpet. See, God does us a, does us a favor yes. when we get found out. Yes. You say, well, you had to face judgment. Yeah, he did. That's right. What I like about him, he said, it was me. I've done it. Right. Listen, God chose, God picked me because it was me. I, right. I'm guilty of that. They face judgment because yes. of that. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. Sometimes judgment can be your friend. That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's what straightens your life. Yeah. God sure. sends you to the woodshed, even right. if it's by a fire. God sends you to the woodshed. Right. You know why? He tells yeah. us this in the New Testament. 
He will burn up everything you have Amen. just to save your soul. Right. Amen. Amen. True. You try to build wood, hay, and stubble instead of gold, silver, and precious stone. Yeah. What happens when the fire comes? It burns up. And God will burn up the works that are not right before you. Yeah. And He'll get rid of it. And you need to rejoice. You need to say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you that you love me enough to deal with my sin because my sin is not just affecting me. It's affecting everything around me. I can't have anything in life as long as I keep my sin in my life because my sin becomes my obstacle. Right. Just like Jericho. Right. If I don't deal with that, it will always be there. Yeah. God sees it whether I want to see it or not. I can make believe it's not there. I can try to move on, but it's always going to be there, and God won't let me get by with it. Right. And I'm preaching to somebody today. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. This is not something you're going to get by with. Right. Yeah. And God is going to deal with you. And why He deals with you is because you're His Amen. child. Yes. Amen. And what you're doing is affecting other people. Yes. That's true. If you were a member and been a member, a saint for many years, you can attest to this. Walk into a service. sit there and think, whoa, what is that? That's right. Something ain't right. Right. How many can say amen to that? Amen. Yeah. Something, something in here exactly. not right. That's right. You can sense it. Right, right. You can feel it. Yes. If somebody's on track with God, they'll deal with it. Somewhere in the service, something will be said or done. That's it. That's right. That's the man of God's worth his weight and soul. Yes, sir. I've done it a lot of times. I've stopped the service and said, and said over there, something's not right here. Yeah. This is a right. We got to deal with this. Right. That's right. Why don't you close your eyes?